A mixed race middle aged woman has likely been cured of HIV and is the third known remission case and the first ever woman. She underwent a transplant using stem cells from an umbilical cord of blood. That blood with an HIV resistant mutation caused her body to develop an HIV resistant immune system. Now, the CDC reports African-American people accounted for 42 percent of new HIV diagnosis in the U.S. in 2019. So let's bring in BNC chief medical editor, Dr. Corey A. Bear, to talk about how this treatment could have a significant impact on our community. Good morning to you, Dr. A. Bear. This is huge. Uh, but break it down for us. What can you tell us more about the woman besides that she's biracial uh, and the study that led to this breakthrough? Yeah, well, well, first of all, I mean, we're really excited about this because this is a breakthrough. And let me tell you why it's really important for African-Americans, because we don't really have a lot of uh, bone marrow donors in the African-American population, right? So this wasn't a bone marrow donor. This was an umbilical cord donor, like you said, which means that the umbilical cord is very widely available. That kind of blood is, is widely available. It doesn't have to be as closely matched which means that the person that gets it doesn't necessarily have to be black or white. You see what I mean? So when you start talking about mm. bone mm -hmm. marrow transplant, it's got to be a really, really specific match. This doesn't necessarily have to do that. Also, the fact that this is a woman is really important because women still account for almost half of these cases, but the way that HIV progresses in women is very different than it progresses in men, right? So when you talk about you know, the fact that we're using something that doesn't cause a really big reaction if it doesn't take, meaning the graft versus host reaction like those other two men got, I mean, they, they got cured because they had this the third person but they also had really bad reactions to the stem cells because it's very specific for that mm. particular person. So when we talk about widespread cure, this is not a widespread cure. I don't want to get, uh, I don't get too worked up. Right. But what I do okay. want people to know is that, that what, what this does show is that dozens and dozens of people over the next three or four years could probably undergo this treatment in a scientific um, experiment or clinical trial, and we could see some more folks that are cured of HIV, which for black folks, we know, you know, what, look, once a, a lot of white folks stop getting something, it looks like it's kind of off the table. Mm. But black folks are still getting HIV. Black folks are still dying from HIV. Mm -hmm. The anti antiretroviral drugs and those other drugs that we use right now to treat it are very expensive. I have a patient right now that uh, that it can't really even get the medicine because it's so expensive. So we're, this is definitely not off the table. That's why this is so important for African Americans. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Fauci, along with yourself, what you just said is to, to say uh, uh, have extreme caution when it comes to this. This is not necessarily going to be a widespread cure, but this is a step in the right direction. And you mentioned that it can work for some and maybe not others. So how big of a step is this and how could this further the research and finally uh, having that cure for everybody who is still uh, going through uh, uh, what they're going through when it comes to this disease? Yeah, the, the one thing that we know is that we we have that resistant gene that's out there. And when you have this, about 20,000 people we've seen actually have been able to uh, exhibit this resistance. And now that we have this resistance, we know that we can manipulate this genetically so that we can do a lot of interesting new experiments so that we can mm -hmm. get people to, if they have it, to not replicate that gene so fast. But what I need people to know is that prevention is still the key. We still need to wear those condoms. We still need to make yep. sure that we're not mm -hmm. having unprotected sex with folks and still wish that with the, um, the drug use, the IV drug use, we still gotta use uh, clean needles. And I hate to say that we should be using drugs, but the point is if you're gonna use them, you need to mm -hmm. have a clean needle, that's for sure. It, it, and and I, I love that you said it's a good point because we have made strides when it comes to, to HIV prevention. Uh, I know the USDA, I just read last month, approved an HIV prevention pill uh, that can stop, sure. uh, I think, 99% of the cases when it comes to uh, non-protected sex. But like you said, you still got to do things to ensure that you don't get other diseases that might be out there as well. Sure. I mean, people talk about HIV, but when you talk about hepatitis B, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, those are killers as well. And actually, hepatitis B, if you're exposed, um, you can get a lot of uh, liver issues and even liver cancer. And it's more uh, more virulent in, in hepatitis th than HIV sometimes. So, you know, it's something that you got to be uh, uh, wary of for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, I have a sister who actually uh, was diagnosed with HIV over 20 years ago. And now, 
with the advancements of the drugs there and now her her hiv her um cells are uh, undetectable and she can't pass it along right now so we've made strides but we still have a long way to go